Well, here we are, Memorial Day. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful to talk across Memorial Day? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it great? Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, let's start with the NL Finals. It's ended up being a rematch. The Buffalo Colorado game two has just ended. Colorado's defense was absolutely phenomenal in this game, in this game two anyway. Phenomenal stuff from the mammoth in game two. How did we get here? Hell? How did we get here? Well, it was going to be Colorado Calgary in the West Finals, and all three games were physical as Colorado won the series two to one. And in the East, Buffalo said, we, We're not playing no games. We are not playing games. So they easily took care of Toronto in two games. Now, game three, Josh Byrne still kind of hurt. We'll see what happens with him, if he's going to play. We'll see if Buffalo can clean themselves up from this performance because they said they were on a revenge tour. They got past Toronto. They got past, you know, the rest of the NLL. But they've ran into Dylan Ward and that brick wall that is the mammoth in game two. They barely etched them out in game one. And now game two, it's looking like, you know, we're setting up for one hell of a game three in Buffalo, in Bandit Land, on June the 3rd, which will be a Saturday. So those, so a lot of guys who are in the finals aren't going to be playing that first week of the PLL anyway. We'll talk about the PLL in a moment. But, you know, going to be one hell of a game in Bandit Land one more time. But, you know, great weekend of lacrosse. And now we get, now we move on and we transition with one game left in the NL season. Now the PLL is going on. And, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? Did you just skip over something? Oh, yes. The D1 Men's Lacrosse Championship won hell of a tournament with Notre Dame finally winning their first national championship over the Duke Blue Devils 13-9. Liam Entzman, honestly, best player on the field. That beautiful, beautiful sequence of plays in this game. I mean, you got Brendan O'Neill basically shut down. He'd been shut down during the Penn State game, which, again, controversial. Garrett Letman goal in overtime to win that game. And you see Duke in this tournament, first round against Delaware. Stressful, very stressful. Played up against Michigan. Michigan ran out of gas after beating Cornell in OT. Notre Dame had to overcome, you know, they had to overcome their demon, which was Virginia. They had to overcome their other demon, which is Duke of the tournament. They had to overcome that demon in Virginia first, and they beat Virginia in that, in that thriller in the semifinal on Saturday, and I mean, the rest of the tournament pretty much played out like I thought it would. I got some things wrong, you know, in my bracket, you know, I thought Army would get to the semifinals, Penn State got there instead, and I mean, really good season by many, by all these teams that made it. I mean, Johns Hopkins is back to being a team where, you know, they, they can be a threat. Georgetown's still a threat. Virginia is Virginia. Duke, you know, and Notre Dame, Duke, Virginia, Notre Dame, three best teams in the country this year. We were going to get a combination of that, I feel, in the semifinals regardless. You know, I mean, Michigan, the way Michigan improved this year from a team that looked dreadful coming in, you know, to a team that came in, won the Big Ten, Won a first round game, and gave Duke a little bit of gave Duke a little bit of a scare for a little bit until Duke turned on the Jets, and you know, got what they needed to get. So yeah, Notre Dame first national championship. They redeemed themselves from last year, in which they did not get selected for the tournament, and they beat Duke in a game that was very physical. I mean, 
just a lot of good defense from the Fighting Irish. Duke made it a made it a game, but ultimately too much, too much Notre Dame. And again, it just kind of proved that Notre Dame, you know, was definitely one of the better, definitely probably the best of the three ACC squads all year long. And now, you know, there's that. There's also um, the NL awards. Um, I wanted to get out those out of the way. Christian Del Bianco, he's been on. He's definitely been on. You know, Twitter and stuff like that. You know, just kind of talking with a certain couple of fans that are kind of you know just kind of saying a little bit too much. You know, you have guys like Zach Currier winning the transition player of the year, Terrell Harris the defensive player of the year, Don Bill from, from my Panther City winning the rookie of the year award, Kurt Miloski. I probably said his name wrong. Head coach of the year from Calgary. Dan Carey went into GM of the year. And if you look at that first team, I mean, the great Dane, Dane Smith with Jet T, you know, again, Courier, Harris, Graham Hosick, defender from Halifax. And then, of course, Del Bianco on that first team. And then that second team, really good second team, too. Steve Priolo, Brad Key, Chow Rogers, Tom Schreiber. Connor Fields, I mean, just just a really good, you know, and then Nick Rose, definitely, I mean, I mean, the NLL has just good goalies all around, but I mean, you know, Del Bianco and Rose, I mean, Vink, Ward, I mean, just four damn good goalies, I'll tell you that much. Okay, PLL, PLL, so, we know, we know, we know that the games will start June 3rd on ABC, ESPN, ESPN Plus, ESPN2. You know, it's just going to be a fun time. Now, there are a couple of rule changes, and there are some things that are looking interesting. We have the rule changes first. I want to talk about those first. A 32-second shot clock after possession off a face-off or shot on goal in which the offense would retain possession don't particularly like this. We could have kept this at 52. If, if we did have to shorten the shot clock, I would have shortened it to 45 seconds. That's just me. Um, the two-point arc shortened on either sides of the goal line. So, you know, off the wing and stuff like that, it's going to be harder to get those shots in. And then, you know, two full timeouts and a 30-second timeout are assigned to the coaches. Don't really care about that rule at all. That's That's irrelevant. Um, yeah, a lot of people, myself included, do not like the shot clock rule. It, it's speeding up the game a bit too much, you know. You know, this is not the NLL. I'm sorry, this is not the NLL. You know, I can have a 30-second shot clock because it just kind of works. There, PLL is kind of a different beast, you know. It's the outdoors. You have a lot more field, you know, to get through. So, 32 second shot clock, and it still feels kind of vague, but we'll see it in action on Saturday, and we'll have to come back, you know, to talking some lax on Sunday. So, next Sunday, be sure to come on here. You know, um, there's gonna the other big thing aside from the new uniforms, there are some new uniforms, new drip, new helmets, and everything. Um, the shift to home cities, I use an asterisk. For a reason, because there will still be a tour based model. It's just going to be eight permanent, you know, cities to go to. As like all eight teams will move to permanent, you know, cities. Uh -huh. And I mean, I guess the tour model is going to eventually, you know, fall off. But at the same time, this is the weirdest way to go about it. Like, people can vote on where, but, you know, the PLL is going to see what works best based on the data, you know. And really, I, 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 it's going to be a lot of Northeast teams. Let's just be real. Um, you know, maybe, you know, a lot of Northeast teams, Denver's there. Um, you know, maybe Florida and where I'm at, DFW, and maybe that, maybe those two places could also be, you know, in consideration, but definitely PLL is going to be very much concentrated in the Northeast, you know, as as far as I can, 
that, that, that that's just what I'm going with. I feel like they're going to be definitely a oh, heck of a lot into the Northeast. Um, you know, so let me go back here. And the other, the other championships, yes, there were other championships taking place on Memorial Day weekend. Northwestern got their vengeance. The D1 women's game. I didn't, unfortunately, I thought I was going to watch all three. I ended up watching none of them. And it turns out I made a good decision there for the most part. Northwestern comes back and wins their eighth championship, beat up on BC. Salisbury wins their 13th championship, beating Tufts 17 to 12. And Lenore Ryan, who won their first championship, just absolutely destroying Mercyhurst in the the D2 championship. So Salisbury with their 13th title in D3. You know, Northwestern back at the top of the mountain in the D1 women's game. And then Lenore Ryan. Very, very interesting story there because it's their first championship. And, you know. Now, now, aside from the one NL game, the college game can rest until February. Well, well, late January, early February, early February, and then we can shift our focus into the PLL for the next three, four months. It's going to be one heck of a season. I'll see if I can find a way because I don't have the. I, don't, I had a good setup last year to where I could watch every single PLL game, but now. Um, the site I use is like going behind a paywall, you know, so I used to be able to watch all the, I was able to watch all the PLL games for free last year via a different, you know, site, not ESP plus, you know, hint, hint, I do not, I do not pay for ESP plus. I use different sites. So that's just, that's just what I'll say. Um. I'll see if I can find something different, but remember, 16 games are on linear, and of course, there's also, you know, there's a way, there's a way, there's a way, um, how, do, how do you do the saying? I forgot the saying, but you get what I'm saying. You get what I mean. You're going to you're gonna find a way. You're going to find a way, <laughs> so, or at least I'm going to find a way to get all this lacrosse in. And I'm ready for a good summer. So until Sunday after the PLL games, and then you saw the community tab, there will be a Monday edition of This Week in Indoor Football. So next Monday, it will be me instead talking about, you know, those games, those indoor arena games from Sunday. And because there's a Monday playoff game, I'm going to be talking games on Monday. So, until then, I'm Big Boy Sports signing out, and I will see you all on Sunday after the conclusion of the last PLL game of the day on Sunday.